In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord God, I thank and praise you for this beautiful moment, for this wonderful day. And thank you, Lord, bringing us all together and very specially to listen to our sister Samantha, anointed preacher. And thank you, Lord, that we are going to receive great many miracles in our life through the teachings that she'll be giving us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you brought her and you brought her to that we all benefit. And Lord Jesus, help us to be very attentive, diligent to listen to every word that is spoken through her, through her vocal cord, Lord Jesus. And Holy Spirit, Lord, anoint us also as we listen and that we apply those words into our lives and we become, we also are blessed to be a blessing to the nations. Thank you, Lord God, for this moment. And I thank you for every word is a lamp into our feet and light into our path. Thank you, Jesus. It brings healing and health to our flesh, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this special moment. And I make this prayer in the holy and mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Praise amen. God. Thank you, Sister Marcella. Thank you for that opening prayer. And Sister Samantha, the floor is all yours. Over to you. Praise God. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, all my brothers and sisters. God bless us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us. Whatever, whatever's come out of my, <clears throat> my mouth, Lord, it is your words to speak through me. And we thank you that we're going to receive your words. And this will be our revelation. And whatever we have learned now, we're going to apply into our everyday life, Lord. We thank you for your words that transform our life. Thank you for your prayer, sister. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, today I'm going to share, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit speak through me. And um, we're going to, I'm going to share how the two kingdoms, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of Sister Samantha, you're on mute. Praise God. Can you hear me, sister? Yes, yes, very clear. Sorry, someone's calling me on the one of the sister calling me. So we know in Colossians 1 13 that God has translated us from the kingdom of darkness, which is this world here, into the kingdom of his dear son Jesus, that is in the heavenly places. So we are no longer belong to this world. We no longer live to, in this world. We belong to this. We don't belong to this world. We live in this world, but we don't belong to this world. So we don't ask for things of this world. Okay. It is very important that we understand that our prayer should not ask for anything of this world. We fix our eyes on Jesus, on the things that are in heaven. So we know that there's a two different system. Okay. Two different ways of speaking. Everything. It's exactly the same. It's all from words. And once we are born again, we, God has, that's why Jesus said in John 3, 3, that only when we are born again, that we are able to see the kingdom of God, able to see, okay, the kingdom of God. That means what? See the invisible becomes visible now. What before we were born again, we don't know there's another world. There's, an, there's a spiritual realm. But once we're born again, we can see that it's... So, sorry, there's a verse there. Jesus say, I tell you, so can anyone read for me, sister? Yes, sister. Jesus yes. answered, I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. So only when we're born again, that's when we can see in the spiritual world. See here means not see from our natural eyes, but see in our mind, through our mind. And everything we see is start from the thoughts, okay? From the words in our mind. So when we say we see, we only see what the word of God says, okay? So words, Proverbs 18, 21, life and death is in the power of our tongue. So both of the kingdom 
uh, operate by word and words are spirits okay we got it we got to understand this words are spirit fear is a spirit words are spirit and with a spirit you can't stop them coming to our mind they are always because we are living this well what we see what we pay attention to the thoughts will the devil will come and speak to our mind for instance for example if i'm looking at uh, at a and and she's uh, wearing a mini skirt a very short skirt for example if i'm looking at her okay the thoughts the devil will put thoughts into my mind words just come to my mind uninvited and start criticizing her start accusing her my god look at her it's so cold she's wearing this short skirt what is she thinking you see those words there they are not uh, helping they are not edifying they are not encouraging so we know that those words are uh, they are accusing they are blaming they are judging so that's from the kingdom of darkness so the kingdom of god is the word of god we can only speak from the kingdom that we belong to that's the kingdom of jesus any other words that is not aligned with the word of god we have the authority and the power to cast them and bind them into the sea that's why when we sit with the word of god god teaches us all the principal law how to operate in his kingdom and then how to receive what is in his kingdom and we know that the truth now all these words that comes out of our mouth is either give us life or give us death and before we born again we used to speak about our problems our situation what is happening in our life we blaming these people that people we judge them we accuse them okay and you notice know words they they cannot be seen and they cannot be touched they are invisible but that's what we are operating now so when a person open their mouth and if they are angry if they are upset if they are talking all the negatives and they are talking problems we know that they are not operate they are operate in the kingdom of darkness it's the evil spirit that is operate in them that's why they speak all negative all darkness all cursing but when a person who speaks love who speak joy who brings he who always talk encouragement and and lift one another up we know that the spirit of god is operate in that person so god give us open our spiritual eyes now this is what god is talking about we able to see when a person open their mouth they are operate in in the in a in a evil spirit or in god's spirit okay we don't look at the person Ephesians 6:12 teaches us that we do not uh, fight against human beings but we fight against the 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 evil spirit okay the, that we cannot be seen so anything that you see the person the thing anything that you see they are not our enemy our enemy is the invisible person who lives who dwells in your mind and constantly constantly putting negative words and pulling you down those those are the words those are the thoughts that you need to captive to corinthian 105 teaches us that every thoughts that come to our mind okay we need to cast them down cast all the faults imagination cast out all the faults arguments anything any words that is not aligned with god's word we have the authority to bind them to cast them out praise god sorry i didn't read about efficient 612 but can you please read 2 2 corinthian 105 sister we pull down every proud obstacle that is raised against the knowledge of god 
We take every thought captive and make it obey Christ. Okay, so every thought, not some thoughts, every thoughts come in and speak to you, telling you to go and, for example, if you don't have a, so you got a bill, the, uh, a bill comes in and, and you don't have enough money to pay rent. When you look at the, the bill, you straight away, because you are looking at the things. The moment you look at, at the things, and if you don't renew your mind, straight away, the thoughts will come. He would say, you don't have enough money. You uh, go and borrow this person, that person's money. You see, he always want us to be a borrower. He always want to put us in a position of lack. But you got to turn into faith. The moment that thoughts come, you got to destroy that thoughts. You got to captive those thoughts. You say, these are not from God. These are not from Jesus. Because 2 Corinthians 8, 9, Jesus was made poor for me to become rich. So therefore, I'm lack of nothing. And two, uh, and Philippians 4, 19, my God supplies all my needs. So I don't need to take care of anything. So what do I need to do? I need to speak the word of God because the word is Jesus himself. He has paid for everything for me already. I don't need to worry. That's why he said uh, in, in, in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, that we don't need to be worried. We don't need to be anxious about anything. But every prayer we pray, we turn into a thankful prayer. Why? Because it is finished. Jesus has done everything for us already. We now live in a land of abundance. Our life is now lived in a life of abundance. We are lack of nothing. You see, the devil comes and steal, kill, and destroy. How does he steal? He doesn't want us to drowse and think on love, on joy, on peace, on prosperity. He always wants us to think on worry, fear, anxiety, don't have not enough i'm no good i'm i'm lack of this i'm lack of that nobody loves me that's why he wants us to always replace the word of god to his word because the moment we dwells on the negative words that's when he has the power to destroy us because if we read in philippines 4 6 uh sorry uh if we uh read on, <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So we know that we are lack of nothing. And we know that Jesus has already done everything he has done for us on the cross already. So every time we know that God's plan for us, Jeremiah 29, 11, I'm sorry, I know I go fast with the scriptures, but Jeremiah 29, 11, okay, God says that he has a plan for us. His plan for us is to be prosper and successful. Okay? And Jesus has paid for us already. That plan, that salvation, that everything we do, we touch, we are prosper and successful. So it is finished. But the devil wants to change that plan. So for example, if you live in a happily marriage, okay, all of a sudden the thoughts just come and then you will see your spouse, he's he start to do this, he start to do that, she start to mess up, she's there's another A person. It just come to your thoughts. That's the devil wants to change your plan for what God has has given you that you are re, your marriage, everything in your life is abundant. Everything in your life is already prosper and successful. But now he putting thoughts into your plan, into your mind, because his plan is to destroy us, to destroy you. So you have to cast and bind out those imagination, those negative plans that the devil is trying to change in your life. Because in Proverbs 4.23, in the Good News Bible, it says, be careful what you think. Your thoughts shape your life. Okay? 
Be careful what you think. Okay, whatever you think, that's what you see in your mind. Be careful what you think. You, if you, whatever you are thinking, your thoughts shape your marriage, shape your health, shape your finance, shape every area of your life. Praise God. You see that? Be careful how you think. Your life. Is shaped by your thoughts. Okay? So whatever, because when we're born again, everything is from the inside out. Before, we live from the outside. Whatever we see, we speak. But now we live from the inside. That's the two different kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness is what you see with your natural eyes. The kingdom of God is within you. It look 1721. So now I live by what? the Holy Spirit inside me. Give me revelation and guide me into that path. So I have to pay attention to what is inside me. I have to pay attention to what God say. I no longer pay attention to what the outside world, to what people are saying, to what the situation, to what everything is saying. Because inside me is the power of God, is Jesus who lives in me, who gives me, who, who has done everything for me. Deliverance, healing, prosperity, salvation, everything already, it's inside me. But I have to apply and the word of God and live by his word and obey his word to be able to speak what is to speak and to believe what is in my heart to come out of my mouth. So what do I need to do? I have to always be in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Okay, these are the fruit of the spirit. And these are the, 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 the fruit that I live and I do not let any other fruit. That means the anger, the bitterness come and trigger me. So every day I'm holding on to love, to joy, to peace. Okay, so Galatians 5.22 and 5.23. Can you read for me, sister? Yes, but sister. The but the spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things. As this. Okay, so when I live by the Holy Spirit, I live, the Holy Spirit will teach me how to walk in God's love, how to receive His joy and oh. His peace. Okay, all through His word. These love, joy, peace, it's from God. But kindness and goodness and faithfulness, patience, goodness and kindness, they are how I deal with my, my, the people around me. Okay, there's nine fruit of the spirit. The first three is from God. And the, the middle three, patience, kindness, and goodness, they are people that is around me. That is how I treated them. And the last three, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. It's all about me. Me, what is inside me, that I need to be faithful to God. I need to be humble in everything that I do. And, I, and God gave me a self-control to say no to sin, to say no to what is temptation. Okay? So we know that the, this world here, the principle uh, of this world, what the devil tries to do is always put negative words, anger, bitterness, envy. We know that now in the, in the spiritual world, it's all about words. Okay? Words are spirit. And we are spirit. We are spirit being, no longer human being. That's why we're no longer claiming, I have this, I have ABC. She have, she's angry, she's sick, and he's this and he's that. We no longer point finger at the person. Okay, it is very important that we have now have to have separate the person and the anger. The person and the anger. 
we now put the spirit of anger and the person so that when we see a person when they when they when when the person opened their mouth with full of anger straight away we are not there to get offended to get upset to let that anger trigger us but we are there god set us there to fix the problem god set us there to translate the person out of darkness so how do i do it i cast out the evil spirit that is operating in that person so i cast out the spirit of anger out of that person and all the evil spirit that is out of that person and what do i do what do i want to see matthew 18 18 whatever you bind on earth bounds in heaven god give you the authority to bind every negative things every problems in your life every mountain that is come against you and you speak what you want to see you speak the spirit of god is upon that person my god himself has anointed that person and your love your joy your peace is flowing to that that is what happened when god sent people into our life to translate us brother johnston came into my life and teach me the word translate me from the kingdom of darkness by casting and binding out the evil spirit teaching me and speak the spirit of god is upon me and now my job is wherever i go when i see the word, all the negative words that comes out of people mouth, they are not there for me to, to de get distracted. They are not there to disturb me. They are not there for me to get offended and upset. They are there to know that, to see, see, to see with your mind that those are from the devil. Those are from the kingdom of darkness. So my job is to bind and cast out those evil spirits and speak the spirit of the Lord is upon the person. This is what we are here to do. Look for 18 to go and, and, and put this and replace the spirit of God in each and in every person's life. That is our purpose in our life here on earth to go and stir up people's spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to take control. That's how we sow the spirit, sow the seed, the word of God into people's life. And then the Holy Spirit will work in that person. And it's all about words. It is very, you got to make it very simple. All any words that pull you down, that make you feel imperfect, make you feel worthless, make you feel, you got to rise up inside you. You got to know who you are in Christ, that new identity in you, that new creation that Jesus is now, is Jesus who lives in you. You are blessed. You are perfect. You are blameless. You are completely healed. You are set free. That is who you are. Every time the, per the person say your uh, the thoughts come and speak to your mind, saying your husband, your spouse is, is not good, is not loving you, that's his plan to destroy your marriage. So you have to, you have to rise up in inside you. You have to fight with your mind. You said, no, no, devil. Don't change the plan that Jesus has for me. Our marriage is already restored. And you quote out the scriptures where it says that. Isaiah 62, 4, uh, in the Good News Bible. Do you know what he's saying? You are no longer forsaken. You are no longer called a deserted wife or husband. Your new name is God is pleased with you. You are now lived in the land of happily married. And you are, God is pleased with you. That is how you restore your marriage. That is how you destroy the devil comes and break up your marriage. When the devil comes and say, you are sick to doctors, there's no sickness can cure. You have to open your mouth and say, no, I'm already completely healed. Matthew 8, 17. Jesus has bore all my sickness. I no longer bear any sickness. 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripe, I'm completely healed. And then you keep holding on, holding on to it day and night, night and day. No matter what, that is your test of faith that you hold on to what you believe 
and don't speak what you feel, what you think, what you know. You don't speak with your own words because they are all unbelieved and they are all lead to destruction, to destruction and to death. Death means here sickness and all the wrong things come into your life. Every time you speak negative words, they are, they are laws. Whatever you say, it comes back to you. That's why you, we noticed, I noticed that when I was born, before I was born again, I speak all destruction. I speak lack, I speak sickness, I speak fear, I speak worry, I speak depression. And I live by it every day. But the moment now I'm born again, Every time I speak the negative things, it, it's a law. It comes back, but it no longer comes back to me. It comes back to Jesus because he's my savior. That's why he comes and give us life in abundance. So he saved me. And the moment I open my mouth and I repent, 1 John 1, 9, God says that when you, he is a faithful God. The moment we repent and confess our sin, he forgives us all our unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus has cleansed us, has, has made, has purified us, has justified us just as we have never seen. That's why we need Jesus. Everything, the name of Jesus. Jesus has the power to the power to destroy every work of the devil. But we'd no longer be at work and confess, I need to do this, I have to do that, I try, I, I can't remember. You see that I there? That's the flesh, that is you who is doing the work. That is you, that is me who is trying to get into righteousness to make God happy. To believe God. God doesn't want that. God wants us to speak what his son has done for us. That's all we have to do. And how do we do it? Put Jesus first in everything that we do. That's why he says, seek me first. Seek him. Who is him? His words. Because his words has the power to transform us. His word has the power to destroy every work of the devil. His words only defeat the whole world for us. Everything that we go through in life, we already have victory. That's why we don't change any plan. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was going through my test, going through the test with my daughter being sick and we had to go to hospital. So while we're in the hospital, I said, God, this is the test for me. I'm going to go to the next level, Lord, because James 1.12, you said those uh, who hold on all the way to the end of the trials, they will receive their rewards. So I'm going to hold all the way to the end. You see, when the test comes, I don't look at my daughter. I don't look at anything because I know, I know, and I know that I already have victory. That's why I have to hold on to his word to see the victory. And then to take me out of fear, to take me out of worry, so I don't let, I don't sit in silence and think about the problem, thinking about my daughter. Because the moment I look at the person, I look at the situation, I'm in the flesh. When I see with my eyes, that's when I know I'm in the flesh. That's when the devil starts to put fear, to put, to put worry, to put sickness in me. I said, no. I said, no, devil. Don't change the plan that Jesus has for me. It is already finished. We are live in we are live in abundance life. We are live in healing. Everything is already been restored. That's all I confess all day. And when we get home from the hospital, I was doing the dishes and the Holy Spirit just spoke to my heart. That's your revelation. And then that's what you hold on when you hear the voice talking to you. He said to me. You, you are now live in the land of milk and honey. Don't add anything to it. That was my revelation. So when next time the test come every single day, when I face something, the thoughts come and speak to me. I said, no devil. I now live in the land of milk and honey. I live in the land of abundance, of love, of joy, of peace. 
I don't need to change anything. I don't need to add anything because Jesus already paid for me. It is finished. And I, I now live in victory. And every day, that's all I confess. It becomes my prayer because I don't want God already have a plan for me that everything I do, I touch, I am prosper because he is with me, in me, through me and for me. No one can be against me. Romans 8.31. So what am I doing? I'm speaking his word. And his word is what? It's all about love, joy, peace, prosperity, healing, all the good things. That's why he tell us in, in, in Philippines 4.8. Only think on good things, good reports. That is true. That is noble. Anything else that is not aligned with his word, you your job is to find it and cast it out. That is all we have to pay attention to our mind. Stay alert. Pay attention to what words that is dwelling in your mind. Don't talk to the, your thoughts. Don't let anyone disturb your, your, your thoughts. Don't listen to what people say. Every time people come, the well people come and speak to you. Before you allow that word to come into your ears, you turn into godly thoughts. For example, okay, you go to work and people are talking, your boss is talking about the problems and that you are what you are doing is wrong and you need to put up more efforts and all this. Whatever he's saying, you got to cancel it because that's the devil. Try to you. He always used your loved one people around you to speak negative things to you just to trigger your emotion because if you trigger your emotion if you use your feeling that's it you are in the flesh you are in the flesh and the moment you are in the flesh he has power over you he has power over you and he when he has power over you sickness sickness comes destruction comes that's why when people come and speak neg negative to you, you know that you are not there to be conformed, to be part of it. you there because God has opened your spiritual eyes to know that's evil spirit that is operating in that person. Take that person out of darkness by binding and cast out the evil spirit and place and replace with the spirit of God so that the Holy Spirit can work in that person. That's how we take people out of darkness, just as God has taken us out of darkness. It is so important that we have to understand this principle and we have to understand this truth. And this is the law. And if you don't follow the instruction, you will never see the glory of God. It is so, you know, the devil put thoughts into our mind all the time thinking that, you know, God make all these words, all his law is so difficult. It's not difficult. You got to, that's what he said. You got to have a child, a mind like a child. To think simple. Anything that makes you feel negative, any words that come and speak to you, that pull you down, you have the authority, that power. Say no. All you have to say is say no. This is not for God. Get out of me. I don't want your opinion. I don't want you to change any plan for me. Jeremiah 29. God already made me prosper and successful. Genesis 39 verse 2. Just as you were with Joseph, Lord, you are with me right now. Everything I do, I touch, I'm prosper and successful. That's all I confess all day. Every morning, every day, when the thoughts come, I replace the negative words with the word of God. That's all I need to do. And the more I speak, the more I spend time with God, the more he speaks back to me. Because why? I no longer think with my mind. I think with the word of God. I make his thoughts becomes my thoughts. His way becomes my way. So whatever I do, I ask the Holy Spirit. You see, each and every one of us has the Holy Spirit in us. And all we have to do is ask. He is our helper. He's our comforter. He's our teacher. He will teach us everything. 
and guide us in all truth. And we don't bring the word of God into our, into our own understanding. That's why we don't ask how. We don't reason with the word of God. We don't ask how or why or but or if, but we just believe. That's why he says in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, he said, trust me, trust God with all your heart. Do not lead to your own understanding because the word of God is beyond your imagination, beyond your understanding. We need the Holy Spirit to give us understanding. The Bible is the only book that when you read, the author comes alive and speak to us and teach us and guide us. That's why we don't we don't act like a like we know anything. We gotta act like a child, not knowing anything, not reason, but just believe. Do you know what is faith? Faith, there's no sign, there's no evidence that what is gonna happen. It's just the word of God. That is faith, believing in the invisible. And when you believe and you keep on confessing what he says, he will, that's when you get the 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 in the impossible. Everything is possible for God. Nothing is impossible for him. That's why we don't, there's no limit in in, in our life. Everything is it's unlimited. Everything from God, there's no time. Whatever you believe, you receive. But you keep on holding on, holding on. Hold. And this is how you fight a good fight of faith. You keep on confessing, believing that what he said is true. And no matter what the devil comes and brings to you, what the thought, what people say about you, you have to bind and cast out and cancel what people are saying against you. You've got to captive every thoughts that come into your mind, every negative words that pull you down and say you can't. You answer back to yourself, Philippians 4.13, that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. You are no longer live. Your life is now hidden in Christ. Acts 17.28, it is in him that you live, in him that you move, in him that you have your being. Everything about you is now Jesus lives in you. That's why you get up in the morning, you say, God, I'm under grace. Do you know what's under grace? That's God's ability, God's authority, God's power, God's strength, everything of God, he gives it to you. And all you have to do is speak his word for it to come alive and do everything for you. Everything. You don't have to use your strength. I said, Lord, I need to move this fridge. It's 30, 40 kilo, and I'm like, God, Holy Spirit, can you please help me? I know that you are my strength, Lord, and I can do all things. And I just live and I move because why? I speak the words. And Isaiah 51, 11, when you speak the words, the words never, the words of God go forth, never comes back empty. And every promise of God is a yes and amen. And because I confess and I keep on believing, 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 you know, I confess my health one and a half years, 15 to 18 months. I hold on to God's word throughout the process. God was teaching me how to abide in him, how to trust in him, how to let go and not get offended, how to not listen to people. And you know what? Throughout the process, he was teaching me to be patient. He was changing my character to become more like him. And the more I become like him, the more I see that I'm healed, the more I see that I'm perfect in every way because Jesus made me perfect. And then I start to see my family, my children, my husband, my finance, my health, every area of my life is already perfect. And every time the devil comes and say, you are in debt, you are this, you are that. I said, Jesus, Colossians 2.14, you cancel all my debts already. It's no longer I live, but you live in me. 
I'm a new creation now. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It's no longer that old person. Whatever I did, all the old has gone. All the old has gone. My, my sickness gone. My debt's gone. My, everything of the old has gone. But the devil doesn't want you to become that new person. So every day inside us, the flesh and the spirit are fighting continuously. And whoever we yield to, if we yield to the Holy Spirit, we are depending on him. We are asking him. That's when he give us revelation to take our, us out of our problems of what we are going through. But if we yield to our own understanding, we yield to the flesh, with you at looking at people and, and speaking problems and let the negative words drown in us and talk to us, that's when we are yielding to the, to the flesh, to the devil. That's when he gives us more destruction in our life. God say in his word, Deuteronomy, uh, in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy, that when, when we speak the words, God, he says, now I give you a choice, life or death, you have to make that decision. And whatever comes out of your mouth, whether destruction, negative words, problems, you are leading to, to death, you are leading to destruction. But when you speak life, what is life? Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. The life here is just not normal life, it's internal life. And when you speak that, that's when he comes, and that's when you receive everything from his kingdom. So all we have to do is pay attention to what words is coming to our mind. And we know because we are living this fallen world, we are living the world that we, where the devil is controlling it, we have to always continuously renewing our mind with align with the word of God. And God is a God of faithfulness, of forgiving. The moment we repent, how do I come out of darkness? When, when I'm thinking about my problems, the moment I said, I'm sorry, God, for all my sin, my words, my thoughts, my action of what I have been thinking, forgive me, Lord. That moment there, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. And the devil cannot bring those thoughts back to us. But if we keep on dwelling day by day, Every moment we're thinking about it and we know that whatever we think, it multiply. If you sit there and thinking about your sickness, about what the doctor say, the situation is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. If you are thinking about your spouse, it's, it's messed up. You are making your whole relationship worse and worse and worse. Because why? The devil is keep on putting thoughts into your mind, telling you what to do saying all the bad things about your situation. That's why you need to learn to always captive those thoughts. Say, no, this is not from God. That's what we do every day. And, every, and the more we are paying attention, the more it becomes a habit. Everything is become a habit, then it becomes our character. And when the thoughts come, if we put into practice every day, we know straight away that is not from God. That's why Jesus say, my sheep hears my voice. And the voice of the stranger, we do not hear. That's the voice of the devil. We bind it, we say no. And it's very clear. Anything that makes you pull you down, make you feel negative, that's the thought, that's the word we need to bind and cast it. And all we have to put to do is put the spirit. We don't claim that I'm angry. We don't claim my husband, my children, my wife. This person is angry. We said there's a spirit of anger in that person. That is, how we, that is how we are speak now. It's just like when we go to another country. Okay, you come to my country and you have to uh, speak my language. Because if you speak your language and I speak my language, we will not be able to understand what, what we are saying. So it is important that you have to learn the new language to see the benefits of what that country, what my country has to offer for you. 
and then you apply the law in the country. You cannot bring your law into my country and apply for it. It doesn't work. So it's just like the kingdom of God. We now translate into the kingdom of light. We have to learn to speak the right way. We, have, we are now no longer a human nature, a human being. We are now a spirit being. So every word we have to speak, we have to put a spirit in front of the word. Spirit of fear, spirit of worry, spirit of anxiety, spirit of anger, spirit of depression. Those are spirit from the, from the evil, from the devil. So what do we do? We say we don't no longer point at the person. Because if we keep and say, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, that there you are claiming the wrong thing. That's why you say, I'm sick. That's from the devil. He will put sickness into you because he always wants us to speak the wrong thing. I'm tired of doing this. I'm sick of you. I, I can't wait. I'm dying to do that. That's what he always wants us to speak because that's what whatever we say we shall have. Whatever we say, we shall have. That's the spirit of, that is the law that we have to follow. And we have to break that, that have that unknowledge, that understanding, that we have to learn the new way, the new law, the new principle that is in the kingdom of life. Every word comes out from a person, we know when the person is upright in love. And we speak love into that person. When the person is speaking negative, no matter who, no matter who, especially our loved one, the devil always use our loved one to, to, to distract us. That's why we have to stand strong. You know, when I go through with my husband, the devil was using my husband and put the spirit of, of pride, spirit of anger, and he was stopping me to come to know the word of God. He scream and yell, the, the spirit of screaming, the spirit of yelling. What is the purpose of this? And he, he's so, up, the spirit of upset. But me, every day, I just cast out. I said, no, devil, how dare you use my husband to stop me from speaking the word of God? You get out of my husband right now in Jesus' name. That's all I confess. And I said, Lord, you are with him. The spirit of God is upon him. He's a new person in Christ now. There's no darkness in him. There's only love and joy and peace. Six months, eight months, one year, year and a half, it's just getting better and better. Because why? It starts from my mind. Because all I see is Jesus in him. I see only light and I see no darkness. This is what God wants us to, to be. He only look at our mind and our heart, the inside of us. What are we dwelling all day? Love, joy, peace, healing, prosperity. Is that all? That's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom that, that's going to come out into your reality. Remember, what you think continuously, you become. What you think continuously, you become. So every day I'm confessing, I'm blessed, I'm perfect in Jesus' name. Every area of my life is perfect. Every time the devil comes and want to change my plan and say there's this, there's that, I said, no, devil, I live in the land of milk and honey. I don't need to change anything. Jesus already won the victory for me. Joshua 10, 8, I do not, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be worried. He said, for I have already given you the victory. No one can stand against you. No weapon formed against you shall be prosper. So I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to look at the weapon that comes against me. That means I'm not going to look at the problems that comes against me. They just come to test my faith. So I'm going to hold on to what God said. That's all we have to do. Any negative words come, we cast it out. We only speak love, joy, peace. Don't let the devil steal the words, the love, the joy, the peace that God has put in our heart. Every day he's chasing us to take away the peace, the love, the joy. We got to hold on to our position. 
we got to hold on and stand on our position and know that who we are in Christ, that we are full of love, full of joy, full of peace. And we are favored by God and by men. And remember, God is on your side. No one, nothing can be against you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Thank Sorry, you. I think I went over time, brother. Praise God. All good, sister. All good. Praise sister, God. Praise God. Sister. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I can't hear you, sister. Yes. Yeah, I said praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Sister Samantha. That was beautiful. Thank you. Don't Jesus. worry about praise the time. God. It was truly led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Jesus. See how simple God made it for us? Amen. Oh, Amen. That negative words? You said, no, 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 that's not me. I'm healed. I'm blessed. I'm anointed. Is That's God. what you have to do. Be praised. Don't let the don't let the devil put negative words into your mind. Just stop and say no. Don't talk to me in Jesus' name. Do you know when I'm studying? Every day he put something on my mind. I said, no, don't talk to me. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want your suggestion. I don't want your idea. I don't want your plan. My plan, Jesus already, it is finished. It's already done. I don't need to change anything. That's all we have to say. That's yes, all we have to say. Okay. And you will see your life transform. Amen. Amen. So God has taken me out and he has canceled my debt, sister. Nearly a million dollars. All canceled in Jesus' name. It completely healed. Completely set free. Marriage restored. Everything restored. Because that's all I see in my mind. Love, joy, peace, prosperity, abundance. I work for God, not for people. So I don't look at people. I'm only here to bless them. I speak life into everyone's life. God bless them. When I speak negative, I tell devil, how dare you use this person to speak like that to me? Because the devil always use people to speak to you directly. Just like Matthew 16, 23. When Peter tells Jesus, don't go and die on the cross and, and everything, Jesus turned around and said, get away from me, Satan. You are an obstacle that is blocking. So you do the same when the devil used your husband, your wife to speak to you with, with anger, with whatever. You tell the devil, how dare you use my husband, my wife to talk to me like that. You are an obstacle that is blocking my marriage, my blessing, my, my, my health, my finance, everything. That's all you have to Amen. say. Change your words. Words has power. That's why your 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 tongue, your mouth, words coming out have have power to transform you. You know, at night, he the devil always come and attack us. So many thoughts coming through with problems. Sometimes so much you can't even say. I just open my mouth. I said, Jesus, Jesus, love me. Jesus, Jesus. I only want to know Jesus. The other day, he was messing up with my mind, sister, continuously. And all of a sudden, the thought comes in, in, in the Holy Spirit, don't mess up with my mind. I have a mind of Christ. You see, when you are by yourself, that's when the devil attacks you. That's when you always put Jesus with you, in you, through you, and for you. And everyone you see, don't look at that, what they are doing, but you see Jesus in them. And when you see Jesus in them, they are perfect. When you see Jesus in yourself, you are perfect. Then you stop complaining. Jesus, you make me beautiful. You make me perfect. I don't need to change. I don't need to do anything. Jesus, you're my strength. Jesus, you, I have your mind. Jesus, I am the body of Christ. Jesus loves me. Doesn't matter. People forsaking me, but Jesus never forsaking me. You see, you speak all the way. You don't speak with your feelings. You speak what you believe. Jesus, what he has done for you. That's all you have to do. Call out the name of Jesus. That's why Peter and John say, silver and coin I don't have, but I have the name of Jesus. And if you have the name of Jesus, you have everything. Everything. 
You don't need to do anything, but just walk in love every morning. You get up, you are worry-free, carefree in Jesus' name. He always, Isaiah 45 too, he's already got before you. Make everything perfect for you already. Already. So why are you need to go and try to sort out, fix this, do this? You just walk in love. And when there's love, there's God, because God is love. And he will bring the right people into your life. He will bring the right job, the right people, everything in the right place. That's when the favor of God. You don't understand, sister. God canceled my debts. And then he, in six months, my husband, we op he opened a business. In six months, generate helping. We no longer work for this kingdom. So we don't do anything with this kingdom. But we go and help people, give them love and blessing. We help. He goes and help people who are in needs, who are uh, who cannot uh, have the spirit of disability. So God give us the license supernaturally, and supernaturally bring people, because I told him everything you got to do in love. Where there's love, there's God, and when there's love, there's God. God will bring blessing to you. You don't think about the money. Everywhere you go, Colossians 3.23, you are working for God, not for people. Don't look at the people, but look how to bring joy and love and peace into that person. And when you do that, blessing will come back to you. Six months, millions of dollars just coming like that, supernaturally, sister, everything. Because why, sister? All I see in my mind, it's love, joy, peace. All I can hear is what God says. God, you say this. When the devil put thoughts into my mind, when people speak to me, I reply back with what God says. Nothing else. Don't use your word because it will slowly lead to unbelief. It will lead to your flesh. It will start leading to your feelings. God, every Every sentence apply with scriptures, with the receipt, with what Jesus has done for you. And the more you spend time with the, with, with the Holy Spirit, the more he teaches you how to connect one scriptures to the next scriptures to the next scriptures and give you the big picture in your mind. And you hold on to that with confidence, with joy, knowing that you already have it. And then you just walk in love because you know you already have victory. He will never, never, never forsaken you. Whatever you're going through your life, it's just a test. They come and they go. And the more you talk about it, the more you think about it, the more it becomes your life. Cast it out. Cast it onto Jesus. Jesus already done it. Cast it. That means you no longer care for that thing. Care for that person. Because when you care for that thing, that person, it becomes a burden to you cast it because you when you cast it in because you care and then you make it that person to become what you want them to become you are not there to change your husband your wife your children anybody you are there to love them that's why god said you own man nothing except love and whatever they are doing wrong you know that's the evil spirit operating them cast it out Whatever the devil put thoughts, your wife is this, your husband is this, your children. No, 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 that's not them. You, it's you, devil. You get out of them. The spirit of God is upon them. Praise God. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Beautiful, Sister Samantha. It's so awesome how the Holy Spirit is, has led you to, you know, speak to each one of us. And I'm sure whatever you have spoken to us today, we are going to keep it in our hearts and fight the spiritual battle every day because the enemy is never at rest. He is going to give us thoughts, but it is up to us to take the word of God and, and smash him and you know, defeat yes. him with the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Does anyone have any questions? Praise God. We'll just say a closing prayer, sister, and then we'll stop the recording. And after that, we can have the yes. question time. Yes, sister brother. yes brother Maxwell. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful teaching and amazing, amazing, amazing teaching we had today from our dear sister, Samantha, my God. I thank you, Lord, that you have made this possible, her availability to come and share the word in this platform, my God, at the last minute for accepting our invitation, my God. I thank you, Lord, that as we live in the two kingdoms, but we have to discern which kingdom we belong to. And when we discern the kingdom we belong to, we know who our God is, my God. And let us always speak the truth, my God, because in Proverbs 18, 21, life and death is in the power of our tongue. The words, my father, which come out from our mouth discern than which, where is this word belongs to? Whether it belongs to the kingdom of darkness or it belongs to the Lord Jesus, the new covenant. Let us understand, my God, every day when we speak, our thoughts, our action would always be aligned, my God. For we are not fighting the battle of this world, but the unseen forces of the unseen world, my God. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, every thought comes out, you know that that's the enemy which brings it out, my God, which is not of your kingdom. I thank you, Holy Father, that in Jeremiah 29, 11, that you have plans for us, plans to prosper us, plans to give us hope and plans to give us a future, my God. So let us be careful with our words when they come out from our mouth. Are these words edifying? Are they being a blessing? Are they uplifting people? But let us understand, my God, what the enemy plans are. Because every word, what we speak, we can discern that where it belongs. In Galatians 5, 22 to 23, the fruits of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Let us always use these gifts that what the Holy Spirit has given us in a way that it should be edifying you and be a blessing to others. Because the words we speak are spirit. And we, let us be careful with our words when we speak them, my God. Let us understand that the Spirit of God is upon us. Let us understand that you use these scriptures. And I thank you, God. I thank you, Father, for this time today. I thank you, Jesus, that we hear your voice and we follow you, my God, as for John 20, 10, 27, my God. My Father, you have given us the spirit of the fight, the right spirit, my God. You have given us the spirit of joy, my God. And in Joshua 10, 8, my God, you said, do not be afraid of them, that the victory is already yours, my God. When you have given us the victory, my God, there is nothing for us to fear, my God. That sister has so beautifully through the scriptures, through our own testimony, have given us this room to understand that in which part of our life we are and how we can navigate through this wicked world, my God. Let us always be faithful and be careful of our words which we speak, my God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this platform that this platform is your holy ground. 
and every word spoken here, my God, it is a word which will be blessed and generations would be blessed with this. I thank you for anointing Sister Samantha and all the warriors, my God, who share the word that we are all blessed to be a blessing to the nation. And today, as I close this prayer, let us understand and not go empty again, but to be filled and always be filled, my God, with your precious word and with your precious grace. I give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' precious, mighty and holy name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Maxwell. Thank you for that beautiful closing prayer. Praise Jesus. Amen.